Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how I go from color management to color correction to a little bit of color grading and I'll show you a couple of interesting techniques I use in my workflow. So here in my timeline I have a few shots. I have a quite an amazing shot of us walking across a giant dam. Um, a shot here in the lift up. These are some example shots, they're all shot in S-Log3 on an A7 III and s camera 3 Cine. So to start off, we're gonna go into the color page. Um, I always have my scopes open down here and I usually close my clips while working. So we're gonna close it, I'm gonna put it up full screen. So for color management, you first wanna go to File, Project Settings, Color Management. Leave this on the usual, leave this bottom one on the usable because we want to deliver in Rex 709 Gamma 2.4 and put this on a color space you want to work in. Da Vinci White Gamut Intermediate is my preferred one so we're gonna do that, we're gonna save and then we're gonna name our first note CST we're gonna add one more note add a serial, note label, exposure add another note label it white balance add another note um, name it saturation add another note name it cst again add another note name it lut so we're first gonna go in here type in color space transform put it on there and then we're gonna click on this one choose your input color space so for this that would be sgamma 3 input gamma would be s log 3 so that transforms it now into the finchy white gamut the finchy intermediate there we go we transformed it into the finchy white gamut with the finchy intermediate now we're gonna click this away i'm gonna go in here this one color space transform and then we're gonna put the finchy white gamut the finchy intermediate color space Rec 709. So for now we're gonna choose Gamma 2.4. So we have a nice output image. So what do we see here? We see a very flat image with a little bit of saturation and a little bit of green yellow is cast on the white balance. So first we're gonna fix exposure. There are a lot of ways to fixing exposure. You can use your primaries, you can use your primary color bars, log wheels, curves, HDR wheels, but in the end I prefer HDR wheels over most of them. HDR wheels work in a way where they keep in mind your log profiles, like the log wheels in the primaries. They keep in mind your log, uh, your gamma and your color profiles. HDR wheels do the same but give you control over blacks, darks, shadows, light, highlight, specular and then the global of course. So they give you a lot more control over all the individual little areas in your footage. So first we're gonna fix the shadows by pulling them down. Can see they're gonna get nice and down in here we're gonna use the dark now to stretch the little dark parts here in the graph to the lowest part and we're gonna pull up the highlights a little bit a little bit around 80. right now we have a really punchy and desaturated image because of that as you can see if we turn off and on the note you'll see it becomes a little bit more desaturated as well but for now we'll go to white balance we're gonna put factor scope and we have the factor scope open here on these settings. Um, everything should be standard here except Zoom X2, skin tone indicator to indicate the skin tones. And that should be standard as well. So for that now, we're gonna do the white balance. To do the white balance, I'm gonna very carefully try and move them with these, the X and the Y axis. Because yes, you can use this, but as you can see, it's way too sensitive to do it precisely. And it's very hard to control. So we're going to use the X and Y axis to try and get it to a nice white point. I think that's quite decent. It's very hard to see due to the small spread on the, on the factor scope. And we can fix that by adding a bunch of saturation to the footage again. And then we can more properly see it. So 1.75 should be good for my... Uh, for this shot because it's kind of a hard scenario for this as well. If we go back a little bit I'll s You'll see me turn around And we can hover over this you'll see a little highlight if you look at the scopes I'll 
put the eyedropper on the skin tones and you'll see it has perfectly a little air, uh, circle around the skin tones. So I added saturation by just turning off the saturation, but I much prefer to do it another way. Right click, denote saturation, color space, 8SL, hue, saturation, gamma. Go on channels, turn off channel 3. Now you've turned off the luminance channel, which means you will only affect hue and saturation. And the luminance of your colors will not change by you adding more saturation. Which is a very neat trick. But now we're gonna add a lot. Right, we're gonna turn on the LUT node, we're gonna go to LUTs, film looks. Because Da Vinci comes with a bunch of nice LUTs, like the film looks. Um, I wanna not be the stereotypical person and use this one. Although it's a very beautiful film look, we want to use this one instead. So we're going to use it and oh my god, that's way too contrasty. Now the reason this happens is because this lot, even though it says Rec 709, it's referring to the color space. In the gamma, which it does not clarify, which is kind of an interesting part for new users, it actually needs Cineon logs, so you need to go here on film lock and now as you can see it does give you a proper output now we see it's a bit too overexposed so we're gonna you know fix that a little bit we're gonna go into the waveform I don't really like it right now we're gonna turn it down a little bit and yeah we're gonna actually add a little bit more saturation in here to make it a little bit more punch now we have the before and after of everything it almost looks black and white we're gonna go to the other shots and we're gonna use the same look because why not I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna look through all these for a nice hero frame and I think I just saw it. So as a hero frame I'm gonna use this frame and we see a lot wrong with this already. We see the LUT output and we do not want to correct under a LUT output instantly. So we want to put here, we're gonna put gamma 2.4, uh, my bad, 2.4 and we're gonna start correcting this footage from scratch because as you can see, it looks way different than the other one and way less contrasty. So we're gonna fix the shadows by getting them nice and low. Let's put the waveform on so we can check that we're not pushing anything too far. Gonna put up the highlights a little bit to get them around 8, like here, 890. I prefer them, uh, so it's about 900. We're gonna have them nice there. Um, that looks nice, that looks nice, yes. That's a nice change. White balance, we're gonna do in vector scope, and it's gonna be a little bit more blue, but we're gonna make it work. That actually looks nice. That looks like a nice white balance, you see? A little bit less blue in there, and more overall. There we go. Now we can turn on the LUT and the LUT output. As you can see, we not instantly, but get a very nice look. We see some issues here in the frame, but overall it looks quite decent and nice. Got a look at the skin tones, they are nice in line, and yeah, it looks pretty neat already. But now we notice some issues in the back. The first one stems from using the HDR wheels, which as you might notice is in the back, and that is pushing it too far, because if you see if you're pushing it too far, it starts clipping things out. So we want to kind of pull it down a bit where this looks all right. And yes, it makes the shot a little bit darker, but overall it looks much better. And we can, you know, make it a little bit lighter again in this way. Now we, overall we have quite a clean shot already, and it looks quite nice. We can check it for artifacts. We do have some artifacts here in the blue, which are probably because of the extremely high saturation values, and probably also the LUT. Now, some issues I take with this shot are the greens and some other colors. So, to fix that, we go in this one at Serial. We're gonna call it the CW, not the lame ass TV show one, but Color Warper. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna open it up, we're gonna click in here so it recognizes it, and we're gonna look at colors. So, for now, we're gonna put it at 12. So now we have the color warper open, we want to click in here so it recognizes it and we're going to look for colors I want to change. I am taking issue with the color of this green and as we hover over it, it's this little point here. We click the point and we can drag it a little bit saturated to the right green, a little bit more green. It's too much push. There we go. 
I think this might be a little bit too much and there might be a little bit of less luminance and get the saturation back a little bit honestly I didn't end up changing too much but as you can see it kind of changes the dynamic of the shot in the background before after before after before after and before after so yeah this was my basic workflow um, I went from log to rec 709 to graded on all these clips let me know down in the comments what you think and what you want to see me do next um yeah that was about it hope you enjoyed the video i don't know how to end this honestly i'm so bad at this i honestly don't know how to end this i'm sitting here just babbling to myself with a light in my face with a camera with two screens with three screens uh, 